Hey, hey, God bless everyone. Sammy D here sitting in the comfort of my mobile and having me my devotion. And I come to you in the name of Jesus, the Savior, Lord of our lives. And I want to talk to you briefly for a devotional, motivational, and inspirational moment with Sammy D. Devotional, inspirational, and motivational moment with Sammy D. That's the name of this ministry that I have in the videos. And... I want to thank you for watching and pressing like or making a comment. I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. And I love you in the Lord. Now, I'll talk to you for a few minutes from a very particular subject that has been kind of a burden on my heart. And that is that uh, I know a lot of believers, Christians, that are getting tired and weary and burning out. And I've entitled this message, Burn On, Not Out. Burn On, not out. And I'm reading from the book of Galatians, one of the epistles of Paul the Apostle, chapter 6, verse 8. Listen to the word of the Lord. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time or in due season, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Let me read that one more time. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people. When you have the opportunity to do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers or the household of faith or the body of Christ to one another. So I've subject this or titled this subject rather, burn on, not out. Paul the Apostle writes to this church that he founded, Galatians, in that region, believers came to Christ. They received him. They fell in love with him. The problem that occurred was that they began to fall back after a while because they got weary or tired, discouraged, frustrated, and doing good. And they began to go back to the rules and regulations and the law and traditions. And traditions puts a straitjacket on you. And you're limited and you really can't enjoy your freedom in Christ. Freedom to do what you ought to do, not what you want to do. So Paul the Apostle saw that and he addressed it. You guys are going back to the law, to traditions, rules, regulation, legalism. You're getting weary, you're getting tired of doing good. You're going back to religion that puts a straitjacket on you. And he encouraged them and reminded them, enjoy your freedom in Christ. Enjoy your relationship in Christ. And I want to talk to you if you are part of that category where you feel like, yes, yeah, son, it's, it's getting to me, man. And there are some issues and responsibilities that we have to face that can cause you to get worried. For instance, family. If you're a single parent raising a family, two or three children, you have to work, pay the bills, prepare the meals. If you're a mother, find a babysitter, drop them off, or have the babysitter come over and pay that person. And you have to buy clothes for them. There's a number of things that can cause you to get weary if you're a single parent. If you're in a marriage and it's not going well. A lot of marriages in Christ uh, have major problems. Thinking about, I got to get out of this. That can cause you to get weary. If you're in ministry and you're working with some stubborn people. Cutthroats and backstabbers in ministry. I've been there, served the Lord 42 years. 40 out of those 42 I was involved in ministry. When I was in Bible college, one of the professors asked the class, How do you spell ministry? Everybody's hand went up. M I N I T 
T-R, everybody was spelling it. And he said, no, no. He took the chalk and he wrote on the blackboard. He said, this is how you spell ministry. W-O-R-K. Work. Mm -mm -mm. Because it is work. And it's work that you don't get paid for. You volunteer. And you're not going to get recognized or paid. I worked in the prison ministry for 35 years, summertime, wintertime, went there to the prisons. They were expecting me. Had volunteers one time and then they get off the next time. They drop off rather. I didn't get paid. I didn't even get recognized. I was at a church for about 30 years and pastor one day, you still doing the prisons? I said, yeah, love. Pastor's been doing it for the last 30 years. And, you know, they didn't recognize me. Nobody knew I was doing it. God recognizes you. God will reward you. God will pay you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's who you're working for. But the reality is that ministry can cause you to get weary. Say, man, I can't handle this. Especially if you're in the wrong office. You may have an anointing and a calling, but you're in the wrong position. You're really going to get weary because God didn't put you there. You went yourself. Your business, if you're running a business, it's not going well, it's not getting off the ground, and you're like, man, I'm, I can't do this anymore. A relationship. You've seen someone and they're stealing your strength and your time and your energy, robbing you of your precious moment with the Lord, and you have to, oh, I got to carry this person one way street. All that stuff can cause you to get weary and get tired in life. If you have medical limitations or physical limitations, mental, uh, number of things. And I've been through some of these things, but I move on. I worked as a drug counselor 35 years. At, at first, I was passionate. I was emotional. I was really involved in my work. I was helping the patients out, going the extra mile. Anybody that knows me from working in that field, they'll know. They know. They can, they can be a witness to this. I worked. I gave myself. God put me there. After 35 years, I started to lose the passion. The experts say statistically that most people that work in social service or as a social worker, drug counselor, mental health, they last 15 years, the tops. And they have to have an outlet. And I know some counselor had an outlet to go to a bar or club or even use drugs or get into all kinds of pleasures that are not healthy for you because they needed an outlet. My was the Lord and still is. I worshiped him. I praised him. I read his word. I went to church, went to prayer meeting, and that kept me going. And I did it for 35 years. After 35 years when I was telling patients, all right now, recohan sing, get out of my office, go to your room. I think it was time to go. I lost the passion. At first, I hugged the patients and helped them. I wanted to punch them. Not literally. It was time to go. God told me, retire. And I retired. I'm enjoying my life. Retired from my job, not from my life. But if you're weary, tired, tired of life, tired of your job, tired of your family, tired of everything, listen, don't get weary. Don't faint. Because in due season, ooh, glory to God, the Bible says you will reap. Number one, give me, let me give you some pointers here. Number one, if strain down the drain, take that strain and throw it down the drain. Whatever is straining you. There's some things we strain for. Paul the Apostle said in Philippians, I forget those things that are behind. I reach out and then I press on. You strain for the things of God. The Bible says that the kingdom of God suffers violent. The violent take it by force. You strain to get the blessing. You strain to receive what God has for you. You strain to read the Bible. You strain. You push yourself. You force yourself to pray and to do things that God wants you to do. But then there are other things that you're doing or I may be doing or we may be doing that we're straining and it's not proper. God God doesn't want you there. God doesn't want you to strain for those things because they're not good for you. They're not healthy for you. And they're stealing and robbing you of your energy, your vitality, and your strength in the Lord. So check it. Balance it. What am I straining? Am I trying to fix this relationship that's really not working out? I wear a size nine and a half shoes and I'll try to fit into a size seven. It doesn't work. And there are relationships like that. 
You're trying to force it, make it work. You're putting the piece of the puzzle where it doesn't belong and you're hitting it in there. And relationships can be like that. We're trying to make this work. It's not called for you. It's not what God wants you to do or a ministry. I'm trying to make it work. God didn't put you in that position, in that office. And when you're straining to do something that God didn't call you to do, it's difficult. And then you say, the devil's trying to stop me. It's not the devil. It's God didn't put you there. You went on your own. Seek the Lord. He'll show you. So take the strain, throw it down the drain. I want to be strain free from the negative things. And then number two is pain. If what you're doing is causing you pain, I know in the gym they say no pain, no gain. Listen, I go to the gym, I work out. I've been working out all my life. I don't want to be working out in pain. I don't agree with that 100%. I'm not trying to compete. I'm not trying to body build so I can compete. And you may have to no pain, no gain, but I want to enjoy my exercise. I want to have fun when I'm doing it. I don't want to be in pain. I'm in pain. I'm in pain. I don't want that, man. I want to enjoy it. I want to find joy in doing it. So if what, you cause, if what you're doing is causing you pain, emotional, mental, physical, spiritual, I'm in pain all the time. Oh, then you need to let that go, man. You may, you may need to turn that thing around. Burn on. Don't burn out. Strain. If what you're doing is causing you pain, God don't want you in pain. Nobody wants pain. Get rid of that. Self-imposed pain. Things you're doing. I'm not talking about people get sick into a, an accident. God forbid. I'm talking about you bringing it on yourself. Because of your lifestyle. Number three is gain. Gain from life. God wants us to increase. To gain. We decrease. He increases in us. We gain. I read somewhere in the book that uh, we ought to save money every day. When you work, you get paid. Pay yourself. Save some money. Even if it's five, ten, twenty dollars. Some of us can save more. Just save and save and save. Gain, energy, strength. I was overweight. I was like forty-five, fifty pounds overweight. I was slowing down. I'm getting older, so my metabolism. Metabolism was slowing down, and I was oh, I'm tired. I'm going to work eating donuts and bagels. When, when the time I get to work, I was tired. Uh, I turned that around. I lost over 40 pounds a matter of time, a little after over a year. And I'm energized now. I'm walking lighter. I feel lighter. I'm eating properly, vegetables and fruits and uh, juicing, green drinks. And I'm doing things that are healthy for so I'm gaining my walk with God. I want to pray more. I want to seek the Lord. I want to read more, understand more, and know Him better. So I'm gaining. God wants you to gain in life. Uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Gain. If you're in a relationship, you should be encouraging each other, building each other up, uh, uh, strengthening each other, uh, bringing each other closer to God, closer to each other, emotionally and mentally and physically, and, 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 and spending time together so you can get to know each other better so you can gain from each other and give to each other not steal from each other not rob each other the strength and the energy and the, uh, the moments that you need to spend with God you're spending in and trying to fix this thing that doesn't work God wants you to, to gain in life to be more prosperous in life and the last one and I'll let you go with this one is to, first of all reviewing take your strain throw it down the drain uh, don't get into things that are cost you pain and then gain in life life, gain strength and energy and vitality and the power of God in your life. And then number three, rain, the rain of God, not physical rain, but God's latter day rain, the spiritual rain. If you stay under God, if you seek his face, you stay under his umbrella. Mm -mm 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 and you seek God with all your heart, God will pour rain upon you while others are, 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 are weary, while others are, are straining, while others are sad and bitter. You are joyful. You're rejoicing because you're under God's rain. There's a cloud over your head. Listen to me. There's a cloud over your head right now. And God wants you to praise and praise will bust that cloud and the rain will come down upon you. There's no 
reason I say this personally. There's no reason that we that love the Lord, we that know the Lord, should walk around life bitter and angry and frustrated and discouraged and down and out. We need to burn on, not burn out. The reasons is because Jesus is alive. He's resurrected. He lives in your heart. So you should be joyful. You should be content. The oil of gladness is upon you. You should walk with the power and the energy and the ability of the spirit of God that lives inside of you. Spiritual rain. God wants to pour it on you. He wants to pour it on his children. God's love, God's power, God's healing, God's miracle, God's strength, God's vision, God's direction, God's correction, God's protection. He wants to pour it upon us, but we need to sit under the rain uh, that comes down uh, from the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm, energy and peace of mind. God gives you. He renews your strength. He refreshes your life. When we sit under his reign, praise God, hallelujah. And the what buses that cloud, as I mentioned, is praise, hallelujah. I praise you, Lord. I thank you. I worship you. Boom, that cloud will bust and the rain will come down upon you. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So take your strength, throw it down the drain. Anything that causes you pain, change it, let it go. Gain in life. Knowledge, wisdom, educate yourself, prepare yourself, increase, and then the reign of the Lord. Do not get weary, the Bible says, and well-doing. Don't go back. Don't go back to legalism and the law and whatever mess you came out of and God delivered us from. Don't go back. Go forward. Burn on. Don't burn out. Father, in Jesus' name, I send this word to someone that needs to be encouraged to burn on. Don't burn out. Keep going. We're not home yet. Tighten up your belt buckle and march. Bite the bullet and go forward. While others are falling by the way, you need to keep running this race. It's a marathon, honey. It's not just a little a sprint. It's a marathon. Stay in the race till you finish it. Burn on. Don't burn out. Don't get tired and doing good. Keep going forward. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Woo! Hey! Mm -mm 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 -mm. Hey! Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah! Hey, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. There's a lion inside of me. I'm not acting. I'm not saying you should act like that. But if I have to roar, I'm gonna roar for Jesus. God bless you. All right. I love you. Take care of yourselves.